the fourth level <coughs> is state wise risks when you go into a ram rajya campaign we need to talk on, both about rama as well as about local <coughs> examples of implementing the ram rajya and every state in india will need a local historian for example kalinga uh, a local oriya ke historian with collaborators i think there the next 10 years there is exciting possibilities of work and dissemination <coughs> we like to come and this is one more thing i would like to add it's that if we want to see uh, a dharmic future for uh, india we have to go to the children first youngsters everything say there is no a situation and i am shocked that many many school children don't know um, about the ramayana they may know the broad framework but they don't know many of the stories which make the which give the ramayana the flavor that it has i think we all grew up on our grandmothers laps most of us here listening to these stories that's not the case anymore i had occasion to uh, lecture to a group of school children and i was showing a particular temple called the hazara rama temple which is in hampi which is completely covered with sculptures of almost every little episode from the ramayana so showing slide by slide i asked them to identify those uh, episodes the scenes it was a complete blank and at the end of the lecture i was totally broken hearted if we are to look at something called rama rajya we must first find out who this rama is and if the next generation is not going to know who this great person was in our country nor any of the episodes in his life which all consist of dharma where are we taking our india our bharat varsha i don't know this is a uh, reality this is how ch- most children not all most of them are growing up this way i don't know what they read and what they do but they definitely don't go back to our itihasas and our puranas so unless we set that defect right and that has to be done immediately immediately and at the base in schools and in houses i don't know how we are going to take this forward questions i think we have had um, enough of our speaking i thought if anybody would like to comment or talk about the points arising but may kindly make it brief so that uh, uh, we have the maximum opportunity for maximum number namaskaram my name is srinivasan Uh, Dr. Chitra ji, I wanted to uh, ask you. You were mentioning Dharma Shastras, right? Uh, there is enough literature that we can tell uh, our children, our young, uh, uh, you know, the next generation about the Ramayana, Mahabharata. So, the Dharma Shastra that you have mentioned is also part of it, or is this separate set of literature that? The Dharma Shastras are a separate set of uh, literature. Okay. Yeah, that's it's a very deep subject. I won't go into it, but it's separate. Okay. <clears throat> but much of that is reflected in our itihasas. Got it. Got it. Uh, one more uh, question to Dr. Uh, uh, Atreya ji. Uh, so you were talking about taking uh, Ram Rajya and the concept of dharma to uh, on a global scale. So probably uh, may not be very relevant, but uh, how does uh, uh, you know Ram Rajya or Dharma Rajya handle uh, things like you know outsiders or refugees more specifically? how was that crisis of global uh, issue handled in back in those days yeah okay let me make one comment on your previous question with uh, chitra ji's permission dharma shastra uh, are very serious sanskrit compositions in depth that is for adults to study more specialists if you are interested in even browsing through dr p v kane dharma shastra two thick volumes you can go to a library you can it's worth buying and keeping it in your library and reading it slowly but for most of the young audience and practicing of managers and administrators the values as brought out by um, ramayana mahabharata maybe the bhagavad gita is quite enough uh, coming to your second question uh, one of the ways to bring it to them is our own belief and conviction yes there are difficulties there is skepticism there is a problem One example you can take a look at, although I think we tend to dismiss it as Indians, the Utsaham around Sri Krishna uh, and the simple bhajans like Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, around the world, his scorn has spread so fast in so many countries and Western countries. People are out on the streets singing. We are more uh, uh, restrained and uh, uh, embarrassed to do those kinds of things. So if somebody believes in it, they are ready for it. On the refugee question, 
I think uh, uh, Donald Trump is not making this distinction. Angela Merkel did. You have to make a distinction between a Sharanarthi and an uh, immigrant, uh, uh, illegal but dangerous immigrant. Somebody who is asking for amnesty because there is a serious problem in their home country, like in Syria or Mexico, uh, they should be seriously considered. Uh, uh, but those who may be potential troublemakers need to be kept out. And even among those who are Saranarthis or people with skills who are valuable, you may have a quota system and so on. Australia has a different system from that of US. But the general uh, opposition uh, to all kinds of arrivals and excessive local nationalism is Adharma, wrong policy. Anything more? Yeah, there's one question. So I'm Malini Shankar. Good evening to all of you. Um, my question is by pursuing Ramarajya. Uh, what kind of a society do you foresee, especially in the changing values and the technology development? Is it some kind of an utopian society globally or at least at, at our country level? I would like to... Uh, you, you see, what kind of society we will create through Ramarajya was mentioned in the slide, Ramarajya vision. I can go through it. Let me just remind you. It's a society where there will be, uh, uh, dharma will be the core value, but also people will be happy, joyful, healthy, productive, uh, with good relationships and so on. Uh, technology itself is not the problem, but the way you use the technology. Ramarajya values are very consistent with modern technology. If you look at our social media now, uh, all the various uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, in LinkedIn and so on, uh, there is both good and bad material in their social media. If the social media users have the foundation of the values like the Ramarajya or Dharmarajya, they will therefore be protected against the negative and wrong messages from the social media. And they will distribute the positive messages. So the technology can be very powerfully used to do the right thing. Uh, uh, good ideas can be communicated much faster and spread out. Uh, use of the computer. Uh, it is the human being, the child, the youth, and the training by the parents and teachers, which is important. Uh, that how to use it, how not to overuse it. For example, if they are all the time playing video games, or some of them are even tempted to see pornographic sites, which are 33% of the total internet space, then it is a danger. On the other hand, Wikipedia, uh, Google, the access to knowledge and experience, caution against wrong use of medicine or treatment of various kinds. So there is discrimination. Technology will keep changing. Robotics will come, drones will come, that's all right. But the government regulation of the technology and the individual's use of the technology for positive purposes. Even now, there are some people who self-medicate, over-medicate, and in fact get, get the opposite of cure, long-term damages to their uh, organs. So I think we have to strengthen the children's uh, judgment, and we cannot stop the march of technology, uh, some because it has potential for good use. Take drones, for example. Drones can be used in warfare spying, but also can be used as an emergency delivery of medical assistance, emergency delivery in uh, floods and uh, earthquakes and so on. Or, and Amazon is using it for a very uh, social purpose of delivering the products faster to the customers. So there are peaceful uses and uh, destructive uses of technology. So we have to train the children accordingly. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm um, Rupa Mohan and uh, I'm a storyteller and docent at the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. And to build on what uh, Dr. Chitra said, uh, we do get throughout the year, we get groups of uh, thousands of students from schools and uh, they come through our museum and uh, we have beautiful sculptures from Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam. So we tell them stories around all the, you know, deities and the sculptures. 
And I don't know if we have programs like that out here, but it's a wonderful way of exposing the children to different religions and, you know, uh, and stories from our epics like the Ramayana. With some amount of immodesty, may I suggest that you may give the mic to my wife. She can talk about how they do this in the National Museum in Delhi. With, with scores of school children, college children coming up. She's a volunteer guide there. Yeah, yeah the Would National like Museum. Stand up and speak, please, uh, to reach the audience. Wow. <laughs> the only occasion when I can ask her to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the National Museum, uh, surprisingly actually, uh, has a very good program, outreach program, an educational program for children. And score, I mean, like India, you can imagine the number of children who come to the museum. They come actually in big, you know, droves. So I'm not too sure that it's, uh, you know, that uh, helpful, but they come for special programs. And uh, the museum has the most exciting kind of special programs for children. For example, um, there was um, an exhibition uh, between the British Museum and the, uh, in the you know, India and the World you know, uh, exhibition. And there were so many workshops that were held, but uh, the only thing is that it's held only in Delhi. So it, every museum in every city of India should hold these, have these museums and hold these kinds of programs for children and the children really and they produce some wonderful material uh, but as I said it's limited only to you know Delhi City so uh, the thing would be to uh, all for all state governments to have their own museums and have outreach so I don't know if the Madras Museum you know has that because they have some wonderful you know fantastic things for example there is the Amaravati Gallery the only other uh, part of the Amaravati Gallery is in the British Museum. And they have done it so beautifully in the British Museum, the Amaravati Gallery, which is the Amaravati stupa taken to, you know, taken away. The parts of the Amaravati stupa was taken away to Britain. And some parts of it lie here in the Madras Museum. But I don't see any anything happening around that. But I'm no. saying that he, there are so he, many Here is a concrete action idea yeah. for some of the people here in this audience and people who know you. Get some volunteers to interact with the Madras Museum and offer to be volunteer guides because they may not have a budget, they may not be able to pay salaries, but they may allow volunteers to come and do it. And then you mobilize. Uh, I think it's probably happening in many other cities. I've seen in the original museum, pre-Delhi uh, move, Calcutta as capital, in the, in the National Museum in Delhi, in Calcutta, on Chaurangi. They have lots of uh, school tours. Ah, they may have gone down. Uh, uh, the Bombay uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Museum is renewed, now reinvested. There. And this we have to bring to every state capital and city. And uh, also we, have, we can create the culture of endowment. Uh, tier, tier 2 and Tier 3 cities need museums and government does not have the funds and does not have the efficiency for cleanliness, hygiene, uh, skill. Uh, I think we, there should be public-private partnership in doing these things. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, at the back, last no, row, sir. gentlemen. Sir, can oh, uh, this yeah, gentleman, yeah, yeah. this gentleman. Yeah, yeah. We go to the right. yeah. yeah, please get up. If you don't mind, your second question. Give you a first. Sir, if you don't mind, this gentleman has been raising his hands for a long time. Okay. Can I? Okay, okay. please go ahead. Uh, sir, my name is Murli Krishnan from Chennai. Uh, the so-called capitalist and then uh, development economics and psychology, they have created uh, autonomous economic man growth mindset. Uh, we have to move from that to... Uh, uh, social ecological contentment mindset. You know, there's the one the, the they have created. You know, uh, uh, extreme individualism, extreme social economic inequality, climate crisis, all those things. Actually, uh, what is your opinion and comment about that, sir? May I ask you, if you're not offended, are you a member of the CPM or CPI? <laughs> the statement is true. The statement is true. We have uh, uh, encouraged what they would call. Uh, 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 the uh, <clears throat> decadent consumerism, which is right. Uh, so from excessive consumption, we have to move to tripti, satisfaction. In fact, very interestingly, in 2009-10, in some articles in the British newspapers, it came out that by 2008, the British people had forgotten some of their own ancient values, one of which was thrift. They were extremely thrifty people. And they had followed the American example of becoming spendthrifts. 
and the 2008 financial crisis punished them and they rediscovered thriftiness. Right now, what is happening in India, in my view, is that after a period of excessive consumption, consumers have money, but they're holding back consumption. That is one reason why this recession is taking place. So I think we need this correction. So I don't regret this 4%, 5% growth rate, but the environment will uh, benefit and the right kinds of products and energy, it should will rise again. Yeah, so I think your point is well taken. I agree. Last and then last yeah. Yeah. The last one. Last one. Uh, he wouldn't hear from I'm Sheila. Um, while talking about uh, empowering our children with knowledge about Ramarajya and the doctrines followed in those years, I think uh, if we are able to draw parallels with maybe the United Nations uh, Sustainability Development Goals, which are very similar, uh, for, which addresses poverty, hunger, um, you know, justice, etc., they would be able to empathize and uh, you know understand that you know what was done earlier is you know even relevant today i'm not commenting on her question one of the things we probably didn't have time uh, we could have asked people to introduce themselves of that background first and then the question since i know sheila let me say that sheila shripakar she's a very well known very highly competent architect and she's trying to bring in some of these sustainability values into her designs, construction materials, and Would you like to proceed further? Or? So I, I think you want to say that uh, the Indian government has been very Okay, let me have the privilege of uh, uh, making some concluding remarks. First is, let us re realize that India is too big a country to be governed. In fact, uh, Nani Palkiwala is supposed to have said that India is a rich country which has managed to keep its people poor. <laughs> so, uh, it's, Ayodhya is certainly was different from what it is India is today, but is it possible to apply those principles to the modern Indian conditions? That's a big question and the answer can be both yes and no because there are different views of um, governance. But one of the things I thought I should mention is that the present system of um, allocation of powers within the center states and the local government is, I think, has lived its out its uh, utility. It needs to be changed. Similarly, the formation of states and union territories need to be changed. Uh, these things will certainly improve. For example, I don't know how many of you have seen Surat or um, Nagpur which used to be a glorified village about 30 years back, two civil servants have changed the appearance of these two cities. So it is possible within the existing framework to bring changes to make it, um, you know, uh, to be appreciated by the people in terms of governance. So we have to delegate powers. The local self-governments have to be given more powers, both administrative and financial. May I For, ask you a question on that? There's yeah. been a suggestion that mayors of big cities should be directly elected. Do you agree? Well, I would say uh, no objection to it because it would be probably a good idea to link the city administration with the local people. But again, it depends ultimately on the character of the person whom they are electing. Okay, Unfortunately, in our country, the, um, it is very difficult to find people of character in top positions. That is where the problem comes. But hopefully things will improve with uh, so many changes taking place. I sincerely believe that um, good governance is not a distant dream for India. Thank you very much. And I think I must thank uh, Dr. Atriya who having come all the way from Delhi to give us this lecture and um, Dr. Chitra Madhavan. I'm not a doctor, the other two are doctors. And uh, they have given their uh, learned expertise on the subject. Thank you. I'm sure you have 10 honorary doctors by now. Yeah. Uh, Shri T.R. Ramachandran is our chairman emeritus. And it, it is my honor to uh, invite him to felicitate you all. He should also give an Anugraha Vashana. 
So, and, uh, it's the easiest job for me today to say that we had a brilliant team to talk to us today. Let's give them a good hand. And secondly, each one brought out so many good points, not clashing, but supporting, supplementing. And so it brings me to my job. As a writer, I would like to give them a job, other the job. I think we should publish this. People should learn the various views we have had. And we want to bring out one or two or series of articles we wish to write. At least each one has given a brilliant lecture himself or herself. And then we would like you to sum it up and also bring out the panel discussion. In, in what way you differed or what way you agreed it could be better implemented. Recorded, and you may delegate to Srikala the task of uh, 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 documenting, editing it, and sending us a draft, and we will give our comments on it. No, but no, nobody attempting to sum up your talks no, will it's succeed. It's fully recorded, isn't it, uh, Rohit? Yes, it is. Yeah. So from that transcript, she can edit it, send us a draft. Yeah, we will add our comments and you can publish it. It's quick as good. Well, either you do individually, we'll put it together, or okay. we can do collectively and send us one. Because this should go for posterity. It's a brilliant talk. So Chitraji and I will make comments and we'll give TSK the last word on that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter because you will sum up the other's point of view to refute if necessary. <laughs> okay. He's closer to the seat of power. I think I really, really, I, really, <laughs> I really have to put it down and then see and weigh the points where each one wins. <laughs> each one has a very good points. And uh, if you don't Mind, I'll allow a month's time for this to come back. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, and uh, I'm glad I had good attendance today also. Come. Thank you. Felicitations yeah. be taken as red. <laughs> so, I would now ask you all, I would first like to thank each one of you and invite you all to kind of network with the audience here. And I would also, in the meanwhile, request Shri T. R. Ramachandran ji to honor you all with shawls as you come yeah, down. We said, no, keep the shawl, no. use it for us. We are a part of the Tulu. I can use the most shawls. Yeah, right, right. They come down today. Yeah. So, no shawls. Just show them for a future occasion. Sure. When new people come to the Tulu, they're not going Thank you. Thank you.